You're listening to Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Hello and welcome to episode 61 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. <laughs> this is Nick. Nick the dick. <laughs> Brad the cat. <laughs> Brandon the fandon. <laughs> if you can't tell, we're, we've been drinking a little bit. We should probably get some background as to why we have been drinking. Uh, <clears throat> we're on vacation. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, why were we drinking? We were playing a Royal Rumble drinking game. And we got fucked up. <laughs> what was the Royal Rumble that we were watching? 92. Yeah, fucking, I was going to say the F, the, the, the homosexual <laughs> uh, derogatory F word for Ric Flair. Call him Dick Flair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm trying not to say terms that uh, are offensive to gay people, because I really don't like when I say that kind of stuff. But anyway... Uh, Rick Flair ended up winning, and we had money on it as well. What we do is we put uh, we we talked about this in a prior podcast. No, we um, didn't. <laughs> uh, we put five dollars in the pot, and then we just randomly uh, draw ten names or ten numbers each, and uh, whoever comes into the Royal Rumble with that number, that's our wrestler. And if they win, then uh, you win the whole pot. And Brad happened to have uh, Ric Flair this he, time, and Ric Flair. I won. think he's won like six out of the eight Rumbles that we've done. <laughs> Woo, Nature Boy! <laughs> I won the I won the previous one, but that one we didn't do a drinking game. So in this one, we did do a drinking game. And what what did we do? So we took a a drink of wine for every time one of our wrestlers came in. A drink of wine for every time one of our wrestlers was eliminated. And then we each did a shot of either, what was it, Belvedere? Belvedere. Belvedere. The fucking nastiest vodka on earth. <laughs> Belvedere vodka or uh, this fireball whiskey. whiskey. Uh, every time <clears throat> someone was, uh, but uh, it was whenever someone voluntarily jumped, jumped the, onto the turnbuckle. The third turnbuckle. Or whenever someone uh, did their finisher, which doesn't really do much in terms of a Royal Rumble type match. And apparently everyone fucking did their finisher tonight. <laughs> no, we did like maybe five or six shots throughout. Do you feel like it was more? It was, it was, it was definitely five shots, but on my third vodka shot, <laughs> I swallowed it. Everything was fine, but then all of a sudden it all came back up. <laughs> It got on the hotel room floor. Yeah, that was one of the funnier moments of the night, for sure. But uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, if you are a wrestling fan and if you enjoy fun, <laughs> it's a good idea to maybe put some money on the Royal Rumble match and maybe make a drinking game out of it. It'll definitely uh, spice things up, for sure. And go ahead and email us if you want to know the rules of the drinking game. We'll let you guys know. Speaking of emailing us, if you, if you ever want to make uh, comments or anything regarding our top five or anything that we're discussing, because we're dumb shits, we, we know that we're dumb shits, uh, if we miss anything or we fuck anything up, fucking... Call post, us out on it. Po post something on our Facebook page. We, we would welcome that. So yeah, We got a text from a certain Gerber brother who's <laughs> on the thinner side. He was like, <laughs> he's like, Ugh. I, d I definitely think Stallone like should have totally been on your top five list. Now, he for action heroes, that's he, what he was talking about. He also said Dutch from Predator, but <laughs> I consider that a, a horror movie and not action movie. So and the what, other thing that he said was Bruce Lee, which I would consider to be a, a martial arts actor rather than a action, action star. Yeah. Which he countered with saying, Beatrix Kiddo, or uh, there was one other one. <laughs> Probably Van Damme. Yeah, it was Cla Jean Claude Van Damme. Those guys aren't martial arts. It's actually. Okay, amazing. well, then call us out on it. Let let's talk about it on the Facebook page. We would love to talk about that kind of stuff. That's what we really want to talk about. So <clears throat> get active on the Facebook page. We would appreciate that. That would be awesome of you guys. 
So it's quote time. Brandon, what's your quote? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I think you owe the audience an apology. Hey, what? Maybe that's his. Maybe that's his quote. Is that your quote? Maybe he's repeating my quote from uh, episode fifty-nine. Was it Rounders? Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I had an awesome quote, but the alcohol kind of clouded my memory and my brain cells, and I, I don't have one. I I can't remember what it was. It was heck of awesome though. You guys have to take my word for it. <laughs> Says the guy who has CM Punk written in pen on his arm. Yeah, it's my tattoo that my daughter gave me. <laughs> but I do have something to read. Go ahead, yeah. This was teased on episode 60, right? Yes, and it was shot down by me. I was like, this is no time to read shit. <laughs> Before our uh, intoxication. Now, I am completely biased. Whoever this is directed to can obviously give their input on this uh, topic. I only know what has been sent to me to be read. And, like I said, I am completely biased. Is this, from, is this from Karen? I'm gonna read this. <laughs> the title of said essay is called Accepting Your Fate. <laughs> this is, this is what was emailed to me. A certain unnamed member of the treasure hunting for nostalgia cast who doesn't physically resemble the reader of this essay <laughs> has committed the most egregious error that can be committed by a gamer in the modern age he quit early and robbed this author of the the satisfaction of a long drawn out win coupled with mass amounts of homoerotic verbal abuse <laughs> with just the slightest hint of me verbalizing how the direness of his situation had made me physically excited to completion he, he backed out of an iPhone Carcassonne game it was oh, it is my belief that when you start a game with the highest ranked Carcassonne uh. player in the land which is <laughs> which is the greater antelope area oh, fuck. you run the risk of getting hit with a little bit of seminal fluid <laughs> and we are brought to your knees by the overwhelming power of my advanced tile placement <laughs> technique <laughs> it is your duty as a friend to close your eyes open your mouth and accept your fate okay I'll admit that I am a tad intoxicated right now, so if my speech is a bit slurred, I apologize. But I know who that's from. It's from a uh, <laughs> one Tim Wilson. Uh, he was on our show. What was it like? Episode fifty-five. Or Heaven so? and Hell Heaven, and Heaven or... uh, your, Brandon's other game show. All right. So uh, what he is referring to is Tim and I play a game called Carcassonne and we have um, we have the applications on our iPhones as well that we play uh, with together online uh, and he was getting what I would consider to be very lucky in his tile drawing uh, skills and I can take luck although I find it to be frustrating but he added on to that the unnecessary amount of shit talking. And which case I decided to withdraw from the game because I did not find that it would be necessary to listen to his shit talking while he was, in my uh, opinion, being very lucky. So while I don't deny that he is a skilled player, because in his own admission, that I was actually higher rated than he uh, prior to the beginning of this uh, withdrawal from the game. I don't feel that it's necessary for me to take the uh, verbal bashing and shit talking from one Timothy Wilson 
uh, and the game of Carcassonne. So if he, if he wants to continue shit talking <laughs> while <laughs> while we're playing a game of Carcassonne in which the game is about seventy percent skill, thirty percent luck, then uh, I will continue to withdraw from the game. I don't need to take that. So. Go ahead, take your uh, victory point or whatever the fuck that it's called, and uh, yeah, enjoy your victory. Enjoy your higher rating than I, than, than what I have, even though I was higher than you prior to my withdrawing from said game. Fuck you, Tim. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I was, was I correct in assuming that that was from Tim? Yes, it was. Okay. <laughs> It was. It's ironic that he sent that to you and not to me. <laughs> Treasure hunting. Oh man! What do you have? I have nothing. Uh, check this shit out. Oh man, where'd the game go? <laughs> Brandon just threw it. A. a a compact disc container or case that did not contain any sort of disc at all <laughs> at Brad. And now he's tried, he's found the disc and he's tried to throw it at Brad twice and, and he's failed twice. With the now the game, disc though. seems to have fallen under the bed and Brandon is now uh, searching for the disc. <laughs> Brandon seems to have been bitten both bitten the most by the uh, the intoxication bug. <laughs> Looks Marvel like... versus Capcom 2 <laughs> for PlayStation 2. That's a tight game. That's fun. It does not look like it's complete though. <laughs> it was at the Five and Dime, the local thrift shop. Shout out to Five and Dime. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> uh, it was in a single... CD case. It had a bunch of music CDs, and I found that. Oh wow! That's and cool. uh, I picked it up for guess how much? Five dollars. Two dollars. Two dollars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> guess how much it's worth? How much? Fifteen. Thirty. Twenty-eight. Oh wow! Tight. <clears throat> what do you have? Brand Nothing. Thing. Brandon's doing the believe now. That's right. <laughs> I need some gum. What'd you say? I said I need some gum. Oh, I thought he said the C word. <laughs> Minus the G plus the C. He just pulled out some extra chewing gum randomly. So, go ahead and keep subscribing to us on YouTube. We're up to episode 25. You can go back and relive the moment, episode 23. Comic Relief. That's the episode where Brandon first started playing Tales of Destiny. And oh, that's God. when I let loose... The biggest fart ever heard on a <laughs> podcast. Go back and listen to episode 23, Comic Relief. We also talk about a whole bunch of accessories that we like to have in our video games. Oh, yeah. Top five accessories. What did you say you let loose what? The biggest fart. Oh, God. These are stinky, dude. <laughs> that just sounded wet. That was almost qualified as an SBD. <laughs> What's that? Silent but deadly, because that was it was weak in terms of its uh, volume, like oral volume, but it gurgled. I I can smell it now. It's not good, <laughs> man. So yeah, go ahead and get the word out. Treasure hunting for nostalgia is the sickest video game podcast known to man. <laughs> We've got. You must be hecka drunk. We've got the the <laughs> top five list. We got treasure hunting. Which other podcast brings you fucking treasure hunting every week and a top five list? Do you know how much pressure that is. You guys don't understand how much pressure it is to go out and look for fucking treasure for you guys to publish on the podcast. For you guys, like you don't make a profit on it. Oh yeah, we do. But it's it's more entertaining <laughs> if we bring treasure and we're like, oh, guess what? Brandon's gonna get an ass punch. <laughs> Speaking of which, is there no punishment this week? No, there's not, because I can't steal his treasure, and I'm not going to be penalized for that. That treasure has to be buffed, though, because it's scratched. Take it to Fergus. <laughs> what? You didn't have any treasure? No. It's oh, fucking wow. right. So you don't get punished? No. 
Remember in the car, Brandon's like, you can't steal my treasure, I can have two items. And I was like, I can steal your treasure, you're a rule breaker. And then I was like, fine, I won't steal your treasure this week if I don't get a punishment. And he was like, that's fucking fine. Yeah, that's right. We should probably clarify where we are right now. We're in Los Angeles, California. <laughs> We're at the Hotel Solaire. It's uh, the Saturday before Summer Lot Slam. We're down here for the WWE Summer Slam. We're down here as believers supporting Bo Dallas. You guys should check out these, these sick pictures we put on <laughs> uh, Facebook and on Twitter at NES Hunter and at our tre Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia page. It was hecka tight. Made this hecka sick sign with Metal Men and a Triforce. And it says, Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia, Bo Leaves. <laughs> I wonder how much we're actually rambling right now, like, and not realizing it. I'd say about 5% rambling. Right <laughs> yeah, now. we're only at 16 minutes. We're doing pretty good. We've got three topics down. we got the quote down, the treasure hunting down, and the essay carcassonne thing down. What was my quote? You didn't give one. That's you right. You forgot. <laughs> All right. Let's... We can take a quote from episode 60, right? <laughs> We did, can. Didn't you have a quote category? I did. <laughs> Top I <guess>. five. <laughs> <laughs> so since we're down here for SummerSlam, we decided to do a uh, wrestling-related top five. And what we did was top five wrestling finishers or signature moves uh, so that we would qualify other uh, types of moves that wrestlers are known for. Because some of those finishers are kind of whack. Uh Namely, Cesaro, my favorite current wrestler, whose finisher is the... Uh, neutralizer. The neutralizer, which is... It, uh, it, admittedly, it takes a lot of strength to do what he does, but it just doesn't look very cool. Whereas his signature moves, like the uh, this is Cesaro swing and the, um, the European uppercut look really cool. But those aren't really finishers anyway. Uh, do you have your... Uh, dice or do you want me to use the random number generator to i'll go first Let, no let's go um uh rng random number generator <laughs> rng okay so i'm gonna erase what we had been doing we've been using this random number generator app it's so shout, fucking sick shout out to the random number generator app <laughs> <laughs> uh to create um uh, our royal rumble list but anyway i'll go ahead and start so i guess i'll go first yep i'm fucking tired <laughs> <laughs> i got 23 brandon has 13 and brad has 17 so we'll start with me give me one moment please. We've, we've got like 20 minutes left brandon you could hang in there oh, why do you say 20 minutes left just because that's Esti all... estimating <laughs> okay all right my number five has to be the people's elbow oh man the most electrifying move in sports entertainment history actually that's my gimmick number five that moved fucking dumb as hell i fucking hate that move that, that moves hell aside that made my honorable <laughs> mention as a dishonorable mention right i've got a, quite a few dishonorable <laughs> you know what it only made my honorable mention when him and the rock and mick foley did their double people's elbow <laughs> as the rock and sock connection. No, the sickest people elbow is when uh, the rock was in uh, khakis and dress shoes and he ran and jumped over someone, ran back and he stopped and slid up to the that person and then did the elbow. That was he, so fucking and sick. And he had a button up shirt and it was buttoned up only halfway. That was tight. I gotta admit, that was tight. That was Rocky. fucking sick. Okay, so they know a little bit more about the people's elbow than I do, but that's not really my number five, because I think that that finisher is fucking dumb. My real number five is the Undertaker Tombstone. The Tombstone is a pile driver in which the victim is belly to belly with the Undertaker. It is rare that anyone kicks out of a pin after the Tombstone. When the victim's limp body falls onto the mat, he is laying in the perfect position for Undertaker to finish the match. Taker lays his hands on the victim's chest, rolls his eyes into the back of his head, and sticks his tongue out, knowing full well that the match is over. That's my number five, the Understone Tombstone. The Understone Tombstone. 
Understood. <laughs> That's what you said. That's what you said. Is that where? It, oh man, I guess I am drunker than I thought. <laughs> My bad. Undertaker's tombstone. <laughs> I'm next. Yeah. Oh man. Guess. Guess what? Guess what? What? Not knock. Who's it? <laughs> Chico. Chico who? Chico of the fucking razor's edge. Oh shit. <laughs> I think that is the most unique move that has been done in sports entertainment within the last 20 years. Razor Ramon picks up his, uh, his opponent in like a reverse crucifixion and slams him down on their neck. If you haven't seen The Razor's Edge, look it up because it will kick your ass. <laughs> when you get done watching it, you get thrown across the room by a magical force. And then your ass gets kicked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. My number five is going to be a powerhouse move. We're on four. I no, we're not. Yet. We're on five? Yeah. I okay. was first. Okay, that's right. Yep, go ahead. It's going to be the clothesline from hell nice. from Bradshaw. Very nice. Not from JBL, but from fucking Bradshaw when he was hella <laughs> buff. He throws his opponents in the ring. And then he turns around and slams his forearm into their neck, almost paralyzing them. Some say that back in the AWA days, he killed two men with one clothesline from hell. What? shit. What's AWA for the listeners and for me? <laughs> I don't know. I hear Stone Cold talk about it a lot. Maybe all wrestling association. <laughs> Atlanta wrestling association. I have no idea. Okay. You know what? It's Chicken kinda- butt. It's kind of hot in here. It we need to get the uh, air going on in a minute. Yeah. So we got to finish this po- podcast quickly so we can get the air conditioner running. You done with your number five? Certainly. My number five, or number four, excuse me, has to be the worm from Scotty Too Hot. Oh my no goodness. Way. That's another gimmick. That's another fucking gimmick. It's, it better be. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> It's Kurt Henning, the perfect play. That's right. Brandon totally sold me on the greatness of Kurt Henning. No fucking one kicks out of the perfect plex, and it's a damn shame that Kurt Axel never seems to finish anyone with it. He's too green. <laughs> I've said it before, and I'll say it again. <laughs> so my number four is Kurt Henning's perfect plex. That's my number four as well. That's nice. my number four as well. Oh, That's heck of shit. Funny. Quadruple fecta. Is that a word? <laughs> Guess what? I, mean, I just made it a word like Caddy Wampus. <laughs> <laughs> so let's stop pussyfooting and get to number three then. This is no gimmick right here. The Cobra from Santino. It's gotta be a That's gimmick. That's another gimmick. <laughs> you got me again. <laughs> Alright. So this might sound like a gimmick, but it really isn't. AJ Lee's widow, Black Widow. Oh man, I really love Black AJ Lee. I mean, she's a broad, and I really don't want to put any broads on my list because I mean, wrestling's for guys. But AJ Lee's fucking sexy, dude, and she's fucking crazy, and she's horny, dude. She's always hitting on like guys and shit. She's always soaking wet. <laughs> don't you say that about AJ Lee? <laughs> She gets hecka mad when you call her crazy, too. Yep. Remember when Paige called her crazy? And she I went sure ape did. Shit? Like, she wasn't even, like, calling her crazy. She just, like, joked that she was crazy. And AJ Lee, AJ Lee did not take that very kindly. To perform this finisher, the Black Widow, that would be, she could torture her body in a very awkward manner. She maneuver. The maneuver is also referred to as the octopus hold. Octopus hold. Huh, I never knew that. Yeah, I looked the it octo- up. I, I did a little research on this. stretch. Mm. She does this awesome spin move to get into position, then she wraps one leg over the opponent's leg and the other leg behind the opponent's neck. From there, she grabs an arm and stretches the fuck out of her opponent's torso and arm until they submit. You know what makes them submit? What's that? She sneaks a finger or two in the vag. (laughs) No, she doesn't. That's gross. They might get off on that, too. I wish she'd (laughs) stop incorporating sex into wrestling. Why? Because it's gross. <laughs> My number three is AJ Lee's Black Widow. <laughs> My number three is the greatest submission move of all time. The mandible claw. The mandible claw. 
That's my number three as well. <laughs> gimmick. It's not a gimmick. It's that, a nerve nerve hole. That shit hurts. <laughs> I've I've done it before. I've done it to myself. And if you press you've done it to yourself, and it, cause I was just sitting there like this can't hurt. And if you pr- put your fingers in Mick Foley's position underneath the tongue and press down with your two fingers and press up with your thumb. It's a paralyzed. Press up with your thumb, like under the jaw. Yeah, like this. So you grab, you put your fingers in your mouth, like your non-thumb fingers in your mouth, under, under the your tongue, th- on your tongue, and then press up under your chin with your thumb. And it's paralyzing. Let's all do that. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that hurt. And hey, can you imagine a three hundred fifty-pound man doing that to you? With no mercy, I can't. (laughs) So my number three is The Mandible Claw, the greatest submission move by Mick Foley. Mankind, Dude Love, Cactus Jack. He used the same submission every time? No. Mankind. (laughs) (laughs) Apologies again for the... uh... The sirens, again, we're in Los Angeles, kind of ghetto. Or is the world turning into the Odyssey and sirens are coming for us? Oh, man, there's a different kind of siren, I think. And they're in the water. Sirens <laughs> live in the water. <laughs> there's a flood outside. No, there's not. You don't need to lie to the audience, <laughs> Brad. It's pretty apparent there's no flood outside. I've been told that uh, this area could be referred to as Ratchet. Yes. But, but then I was uh, told that According to UrbanDictionary.com, Ratchet actually refers to a a woman who is ghetto. Who Who thinks she's fucking every man's dream and fantasy, but guess what? She isn't. (laughs) Alright, so I guess it's my turn again for number two. It's got to be the weapon of mass destruction from Big Show. No, it's not the knockout punch. That shit's fucking dumb. <laughs> I think it's like a funny you have a gimmick finisher for every number. I gotta credit Matt Gerwer for this. He's been begging for some sort of recognition on our show, so I'm gonna give him a little bit of a shout out. He did tell me that I should uh, incorporate like a, a bottom five finisher, and that's what I've been doing for the last. For so the big show five. would be your fake number two. Correct. Okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. So, Matt Gerwer, you're the greatest. I love you. Totally, you're, dude. You're my nephew's father, and I love you. Uh, number. He's a number four fan of Treasure Honey for <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> The number four greatest fan. <laughs> or best guest. Best, best guest. Yeah, best guest. He <laughs> said, Tim, number one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I could text that. Tim, number one fan. <laughs> little did he know his brother would make it, and my little brother, Matthew. This might be the greatest episode of our show so far. I think so. I, I, I don't like the fact that we're drunk, but it, it seems to bring out the honesty in us, I gotta admit. So, uh, my number two is actually, and I, I hope I'm not still uh, jumping on any, either of yours, two or one. But the stunner from Steve Austin. That's my number two. It's not my number two. Oh, oh no. shit. Not your number one either? Nope. Ooh. You didn't have stunner on there, huh? So I'm going to say a little bit about the Steve Austin stunner, and then Brandon can add whatever he wants. Uh, the stunner is a seated three-quarter face lock jawbreaker maneuver. <laughs> Stop fucking the air. <laughs> Brad is doing some obscene gesture. I was it looks doing like the, 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 the DX. The DX. Yeah. Like when Sean was laying down and humping up in the air doing the X, like, mm, mm, mm. When did he do that? When he was back doing his, yeah, I'll tell you when, in your fucking dreams. <laughs> what was, the fuck? You're so drunk. <laughs> it, was during the, <laughs> it was during the Attitude Era. <laughs> As I was saying, the sun is a seated three-quarter face lock jawbreaker maneuver. Stone Cold made it cooler by starting it off with a kick to the gut so that his opponent would be in the perfect position. And every time he delivered a stunner, the crowd would pop so hard. Steve Austin told a story on his podcast about doing the stunner on someone outside of a wrestling ring. And his ass hurt for days. That's right. This move doesn't look particularly cool, but Stone Cold made it his. And he always delivered it at the perfect time. 
He even did it on Vince McMahon. That was awesome. So my number two is the Steve Austin Stone Cold Stunner. To my to to add what I have to tell the Stunner, there are two version two versions of the Stunner that pop out for me. That's one when he does did it on Vince McMahon. When he did to Vince McMahon and Vince McMahon took the bump so horrible. Yeah. And he shook there <laughs> like he was stunned. Like he was paralyzed. When he had a seizure or some shit. That's when he just went down and folded, right? Yeah. And took, yeah. And the second one is whenever the person took a stunner and they flipped onto the top of their head and then did a backflip that it was so powerful. <laughs> We just saw something like that in the Royal Rumble, that one of the Royal Rumbles that we were watching. He, did, I think it was Booker T, actually. Oh, really? He did a stunner on Booker T, and he like did a backflip out of the ring. That's right. <laughs> that was how he got eliminated. And he was number 30 in the Royal Rumble, too. It's hilarious. My number two is going to be a move that could be pulled out of nowhere. The RKO. Oh, RKO. shit. RKO takes no setup whatsoever. If you're jumping up in the air, there's a 95.5% chance that you're getting RKO'd. You might want to say who performs the RKO. Randy Keith Orton performs a fucking <laughs> RKO. Randy Orton, the person with the best music <laughs> and the best finisher. Oh, jeez. Second best finisher. He I did mean. win me a $5 or $10, I guess, battle uh, Royal Rumble. He did. Fuck yeah. I love Randy Orton now. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. I keep interrupting you. That's all I have to say about I'm, the RKO. I'm a bit intoxicated myself. I'm sorry. No way. <laughs> I'm sobering up a little bit. <laughs> I, I'm not too bad, but anyway, it doesn't matter. My stomach hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be sleeping with Brandon tonight, by the way. It's going to be a great night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Brandon's butthole is doing like sh- <laughs> My number one has to be the brain chop from Great Collie. Oh, that's heck of funny. <laughs> that's so... You're lying so hard right now. I am. You guys got me again. No, the, my number one is probably not number one on most people's list, but I've been listening to a lot of Cheap Heat and a lot of Steve Austin, and these guys give me a lot, a lot of... Uh, they, they sell this guy pretty hard. It's Brock Lesnar's F5. Oh, wow. I, I, lo- I really do love his finisher. It looks like it hurts so fucking bad. I, I, I just have a thing for finishers where the guys are freaking shot into the air and they land straight on their face. There's something about that F5 that just looks so fucking cool to me. Um, it, it, Brock is just fucking massive. He's so strong and... It, his strength allows him to perform this maneuver on anyone. It doesn't matter how big they are. It doesn't matter if it's the big show or fucking even Andre the Giant, even though Andre the Giant wasn't around when Brock Lesnar was around. He's just so fucking big and so strong and the maneuver looks so cool and looks so fucking painful. He did it to Mark Henry like when he first came back earlier this yeah. year and it just looked like it fucking hurt so bad when he did it. It's just like it's a cool maneuver and I just love it when the guys get slammed right in their face. It just looks cool. So that my number one is going to be Brock Lesnar's F5. And i got to mention that the F5 is named after the Fujita scale of tornado damage. Fuck. Man, that's <laughs> hella awesome. There's a... The, the, you know how, like, there's a Richter scale yeah, for Earthquake? Yeah, 8.0. For tornadoes, it's like the Fujita scale. And the F5 is the top... Uh, Rating that's for so tornado tight. damage. That's so So tight. that's what the F5 is named after. I always wonder that, and I did some research on it, and I figured that out. So that's my number one. My number one? Speak up. <laughs> my number one has already been said before. Oh, man. Today. It had been said today. And it was... The clothesline from hell. Nice. I love that move so much, and only one person can pull it off, and that's Bradshaw. Other people try to imitate it, but they don't have the ferociousness or the power to pull it off. There's one WWF superstar that tries to do the clothesline. Luke Harper? Yes. And he doesn't do it with enough power. He did it to begin with when he first came up from NXT to WWE. It felt like to me that he was doing it hard enough, but now you're right. He doesn't do it quite it's hard enough. It's so weak, but 
when Bradshaw did it, you saw all the power connect, hit the person's neck, and send them straight to the fucking demonic bedroom hell. <laughs> Why the bedroom hell? Because we're sitting in a bedroom? You want no. to say bathroom? What What do you want? Yeah. Because <laughs> that's where you go to sleep. <laughs> in the bedroom. <laughs> My number one has been told by me from three different people, from three different wrestling superstars, that it's the most dangerous move that anyone could ever perform. No, it's not the Tiger Driver 91. Even Tiger though, Driver! Even though that's a fucking sick-ass move. <laughs> I do have to say, I think our neighbors really of our hotel room really hate that we're up recording at 11... 07 p.m. Who said? Who was it right now? I said, I bet you our neighbors hate that we're oh. recording right now. Fuck them. Fuck yeah. them. Um, the most dangerous move. The pedigree. Really? Triple H. They said that he's, they're surprised that Hunter hasn't killed someone yet by Serious? using it. They said they don't know how he do, he pulls it off, but it's such a dangerous move because they're he's... Throwing all his full weight on their neck and head that it could kill someone. It's been said by China, Vince McMahon, and Jericho. I find that interesting because in the last couple of weeks leading up to SummerSlam, which we're going to tomorrow, bitches, <laughs> Stephanie McMahon pulled that maneuver on both Nikki and uh, Brie Bella. Because Hunter trained her how to do it. Of course, I understand that, but I mean. Obviously, Triple H has been training as a wrestler far longer than Stephanie McMahon ever has. Yeah. So that's, I find that interesting. So they're saying that that move is more dangerous than any other that's ever been done? Probably besides the pile driver. Interesting. Yeah. The pile driver is the move that Steve Austin suffered his traumatic uh, yeah, neck injury is. from. Yep. That's interesting. So your number one is Pedigree. Pedigree. Triple H's Pedigree. That's, yeah. that's a pretty cool move. Like I said, I do like the moves where uh, they land on their face rather than their back. Like, I almost listed on my dishonorable mentions, the triple, the the double A, also known as the FU from John Cena. Mm -hmm. it's such a <sighs> Darn, I should have shocked for saying <sighs> uh, But I don't I don't like that move. Yeah. it's It doesn't look good. It doesn't look like it hurts. It's just stupid. But anyway, uh, do you have any honorable mentions? Yes. Go ahead. Yes. GTS, maybe? That's a given. <laughs> CM Punk's finisher. I also have Sweet Chin Music by Shawn Michaels. He's tuning it up. See, I, I didn't put any moves on my list where that involved either punching or kicking. Because I don't feel that those are wrestling moves. I actually kind of side with, uh, as much as I don't like Jim Ross's podcast, I side with him in the fact that he feels that there shouldn't be closed palm strikes. Uh -huh. Everything should be open palm. Yeah. It doesn't, it, what is it? What do they say? It doesn't sell the shoot factor, the the, the realness, the re the reality of wrestling. Because obviously, if you're punching someone in their fucking face with your closed fist, they're gonna get bloody. And they never get, oh, well, very rarely get bloody. They're going to get knocked out, too. It, that as well. <laughs> but it doesn't make sense that someone would get kicked in the face and not get knocked out. Which I guess the finishing maneuver, GTS, go to sleep. They are getting knocked out. But I didn't include, the, include those as any, as any of my top finishers for that reason. I liked the Macho Man elbow from the top turn buckle. Yep. That was awesome. It still is. For sure. I have the accolade. From oh, from uh, the Ascension? Rusev. Rusev. Oh, the Rusev. That's right. That's his finisher. Accolade is Fall of Man. We, Ascension, we... Ascension is Fall of Man, you mean? That's what you said. No, you, no, said, you said the said accolade. accolade is Fall of Man. <laughs> no, because... You, you, you did the same thing that I did where you messed up you mixed, mixed up words. No, I thought he said accolade and you said from Ascension. And then you said the accolade is Fall of Man. Oh, yeah. That, I did do that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I had another one I wanted to talk about. Oh, the double swanton bomb. <laughs> See, I didn't include any uh, tag team finishers, because I feel like they, des they, they deserve to be in a different category, maybe for a later podcast. Scorpion Deathlock. Wait, we got to talk about the double centons. <laughs> Go ahead. 
If you guys are a fan of NXT WWE, you will obviously know about the VOD villains. God, yes. Aiden English and Simon Gouch. Simon Gouch? I know, I think it's Gouch. No? I want to say it's Gouch, but I'm not entirely sure. How about that Sasha Banks? Well, <laughs> we're not talking about female wrestlers. But what they do, the VOD villains, is Simon Gouch does a rolling senton, which basically he puts the opponent on top of his shoulders and rolls over on him and does a like a slam. And then Aiden English, the captain of the team, gets on the second turnbuckle and does a swanton <laughs> bomb onto his opponent and lays him out every time. The way the reason that that's so cool is that he doesn't go to the top rope. And the second thing is that when he finishes off the swanton... He, he, like, waits until the very last mm -hmm. minute until he, like, tucks his head so he doesn't break his neck. It just looks really fucking cool. Plus, they're the VOD villains, and just... It has a very cool feel to their tag team. I, I, there's a current tournament going on to, to, to determine who's going to be the number one contender for uh, the tag team championship against the Ascension. And I'm really hoping the VOD villains get through and maybe even take it from the Ascension. That would be awesome. That'd be so tight. Yeah. Those are my honorable mentions. You were saying something about Sasha Banks. Did you want to expand on that? Nope. <laughs> okay, my honorable mention included uh, the DDT from Jake the Snake. Everyone does it now. Everyone has some sort of uh, weird sort of uh, spin on how the how the DDT do is done, whether it be the tornado DDT or whatever it is. But Jake the Snake was the originator, so I just felt like giving him some props there. Uh, I also mentioned uh, Macho Man, Randy Savage's elbow drop. That's a classic. Uh, CM Punk does that, or did that, when he was actually in the WWE anyway. And um, kind of a new school reference, but Bray Wyatt's sister Abigail's kiss. I really love that finisher. Yes, yeah, unique. It, it is unique. It takes some time to set up, but uh, the the way that it's delivered and the impact that it has is just really it's really powerful. Uh, so I wanted to give a shout out to that as well. Dishonorable mentions. <laughs> I already mentioned my five dis dishonorable mentions. I have the Spinneroonie. <laughs> Booker T. The stupid ass six one nine. I agree with Rey that. Mysterio. I mean, he throws you into the ropes for like, and you're sitting there for five minutes. Just fucking move. <laughs> uh, they do that with uh, Roman Reigns, too, when he does that drop kick when he's outside of the range. It's a, almost the exact same position. Exact same. <laughs> um, the Punjabi chop. <laughs> I mentioned that one. Mm -hmm. Also known as the brain chop from uh, the Great Collie. The stink face. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's a good one. From Rikishi. Uh as are also mentioned by Nick, the worm <laughs> from Sky Too Hot, and my final one, fucking Brie mode. I don't even know what her finisher is. What is it? She doesn't she put up put them on her shoulder and then drop down, or is that Nikki's? Nikki does that, but it's the, like a guillotine. Not is it guillotine? It's some sort of they the call rack. it a torture rack. Uh, the Brie mode, she gets up to like the second turnbuckle and does a drop kick. Oh, I don't. I don't. I, I don't think it's more of that. a signature move. It's been a while since she's wrestled. Uh, she's. Oh my god, I'm so psyched up for this SummerSlam tomorrow night, guys! I'm so yeah. psyched up. Uh, it's Brie mode, Brie Bella versus Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie McMahon. Oh my god, I've been getting off to her for so many years. I'm gonna get to see her in the ring. I'm just gonna fucking bust a nut while I'm there at the Staples Center tomorrow night. <laughs> Put oh, your hands in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to be wearing our bow leaf shirts, and I'm just going to be having my hand playing a little pocket pool while Stephanie's in the, in the ring. <laughs> so excited. Oh. Uh, what if she goes, is there someone here from Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia named <laughs> Nick Jones? <laughs> oh, man. You'd have to uh, go attack her and hug her like those handicapped people who attack Nikki. Can you imagine what Triple H would do to if I if he heard me talking like this? He probably pimps her out. <laughs> I get pedigreed the fuck out of you, man. Um. <laughs> so what about that M grill? Oh my god, that was so fucking amazing. 
We could close out the show with talk about M Girl unless you guys had a jerk of the week. I do have a jerk of the week, and I actually have a game of the week. So I'm okay, not, we can talk about M Girl. Yeah, though. let's let's talk about fucking M Girl. If you guys are ever in the greater downtown Los Angeles area, <laughs> around well, Wilshire, Wilshire, there's this Brazilian <laughs> steakhouse. Goes forever, by the way. Oh, does it? <laughs> there's this Brazilian steakhouse called M Fucking Girl. Take out the fucking just M Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Take out the fucking. <laughs> they have a twenty-eight dollar salad bar, which is amazing. Let's start off with that beef stroganoff. Oh man! What is the, in that fucking beef stroganoff? I've only had the hamburger helper beef stroganoff. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh my god! But what they had the M grill. Oh man! What did you say? Six to midnight. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a perfect description. <laughs> Hashtag wish Karen was here. <laughs> In my case, I wish Melissa was here, of course. But man, that beef stroganoff, the beef was so tender. The flavor was amazing. It was like a cream, yeah, the cream so sauce creamy. that they used. And it was red, too. It wasn't traditional white like the Hamburger Helper. Hamburger Helper, give me a break. So now let's talk about the salad bar had the beef stroganoff. They had the artichoke hearts. They had these roasted red peppers that were delicious. Oh, they had honeydew. the best fucking honeydew <laughs> I ever tasted in my life. It was like nothing but honeydew hearts. <laughs> a honeydew heart is just the center white fucking goodness of it. If you cut it in half and scrape the seeds out and just take like the first centimeter, that's the heart, guys. That's the best part of it. That whole thing was just pure honeydew heart. Cantaloupe, they had... Cucumbers with olive oil and peppermint on them. Now let's move on to the steak that they serve. Oh my god. Now, we got the forty six ninety nine dinner, which included not only a salad bar, but unlimited meat we could eat. We definitely took the, uh, the most out of that deal. Oh man, we had so much meat on our plates. I couldn't tell which meat was which. We had like lamb sauce, we had... Freaking uh, ribeye, picanha for days. <laughs> <laughs> that was like their meat of the week right there. They kept saying that was their, what, what did they say? Their chef's specialty yeah. or something like that? They were pushing this chef's specialty freaking like it was freaking Bray Wyatt just coming out through the WWE. Pushing them heck of hard. Brandon's, uh came to the conclusion that that must have been their cheapest meat available because they wanted us to eat it so much. It did taste good, but man, there was ribeye, there was prime rib. Filet. Filet. Chicken fucking hearts. <laughs> Brad got this freaking uh, idea to eat chicken hearts because like, there was a menu that showed all the different stuff they came out with on the, the skewers or spirit, whatever you want to call them. They, what they do with this Brazilian steakhouse, they come out with this meat on these spears or skewers, and they bring it to your table, and they basically say, would you like some of this? And if you say yes, they just cut it off for you. And uh, if you make special requests, they'll bring it out to you, and they have a little menu at your table. And one of the items was chicken hearts. Hmm. <laughs> and Brad asked both Brandon and I if we wanted chicken hearts, and we are like, no, dude, that's gross. And Brad's like, I want to try chicken hearts. So next time someone came by the table, he's all, would you mind grilling up some chicken hearts for me? They said, yeah, it'll take like 10 to 15 minutes. Is that all right? He's like, fuck yeah, it's all right. <laughs> so they came out, they brought him the chicken hearts and he took a couple and I couldn't resist. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll try one of those. So Brad tried one, and he held it in his hand like it was Indiana Jones and the, is it Temple of Doom? Temple of Doom. Yeah, Temple of Doom. And he was doing the little Indian chant, like, what did you say? He said it felt hella hot in his hand. It was probably because it was catching on fire, just like the heart in the Indiana Jones movie. And then he consumed it and tasted basically just like a piece of meat, basically, right? Piece of chicken. Yeah. And I had mine. I had the same experience. I mean, it felt kind of weird eating a chicken heart, but it felt fucking empowering <laughs> as hell, though. Fucking ate that chicken. That chicken did not stand a chance. 
The uh, chicken heart tasted just like regular chicken. <laughs> I thought it was funny, with, like that picanha meat. Not only were the waiters bringing it around every two minutes, but then our waitress was like, have you had the picanha? <laughs> it's my favorite. Like, bull fucking shit. You liar. <laughs> I told you, man, she was pushing it. So it's like they were pushing a WWE wrestler. Yeah. After we get the meat, we finally turn to the pineapple. Oh my god, <laughs> pineapple for days. They they put they they like peeled pineapples, put that thing on the grill and grilled it, and then put this brown sugar, cinnamon, caramel sh on it, glaze, cook that on there, then they come by and cut off a piece for you. We were we were requesting that solely for the last hour of our stay. We just kept sitting there at the table waiting for the pineapple to come by our table. Every time someone would come by our table, we'd be like, yeah, we're we just waiting for the pineapple. Be like, oh, okay, just wait a couple of minutes. We'll bring it back by. I thought it was funny that they only cut six pieces of the pine, like six pieces of pineapple per serving. And then they just throw the rest rest away because they. No, I think they go back and regrill it. Do they? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You think so? Yeah, because it was like smaller ones. They like go back and regrill it, then it'd be a little bit smaller. Oh, I didn't notice that. But I I got the idea from Reddit to put some salt on your pineapple. Oh God. <laughs> when you put that stuff in your if okay, if you ever have grilled pineapple, do this. You will not regret it. <laughs> Pour some salt on it, right? Cut it up. Put a piece of it salt side down on your tongue. Mush your tongue up to the roof of your mouth. And let the fucking juices roll back in the back of your throat. <laughs> it's so juicy and so delicious and so good. It makes the pineapple melt in your mouth. By the time you swallow it, it's nothing but juice, so you're not getting full. You're just drinking caramelized pineapple juice, and it's the best stuff on earth. Yeah, we learned. We were eating nothing but meat for a good hour or so. And that was, I was, my tummy was getting full. I think we were all getting full. But then we switched to just the salad bar and the, the pineapple. We lasted another hour, hour and a half just consuming that type of food. Fuck yeah, we did. It, it was amazing. Well worth the 60 bucks that we spent for dinner. We resisted the, uh, the waitress's suggestions of a dinner, a dessert, uh, who needs menu. dessert when you have that pineapple? The pineapple, I told you, man, that pineapple is amazing, man. And apparently the waitress was watching me for like 30 seconds eat my pineapple. <laughs> yeah, she was. I didn't even know she was watching me. I did my salt thing, and then I got the my fork and played with the cinnamon and the caramel and <laughs> swirled it around on the pineapple. And then I heard, oh, it's a process. And I was like, what? I looked up, and she's like staring at me. Like, weirdo, want to watch me eat the pineapple? <laughs> <laughs> I do have a game of the week um, I was playing I've been playing this game for a while actually but I haven't played it for a few months it's called The Last of Us for PS3 uh, the game is set in a world where a virus is spread throughout all of uh, known civilization your character has not been infected and he's working with uh, his lady friend and a young girl to find a cure for the virus uh, the world consists of a fascist government dead set on preventing any more infections and a whole hell of a lot of zombies. So at this point in the game where I'm at, I'm uh, currently trying to rendezvous with a rebel group that may be able to find the cure for the infection. But in, in order to get there, I have to go through a, milita the, a military force that's basically the fascist government. And uh, I also have to get through a... A crowd of infected, otherwise known as zombies. At first, I was having uh, a hard time trying to evade and hide from any of the uh, the military, but now I'm running into zombies, which is a little bit more f fun. And that's why I hadn't played for a while, actually, because I, I was just uh, trying to hide from a bunch of different military groups. And now that I'm running into zombies, and I actually have an opportunity to kill them. It's a lot more fun. Uh, so far, there are two types of zombies. Runners, which can see but cannot hear, mm. and clickers, which can hear but cannot see. As you can imagine, the runners are very quick, but they're less dangerous. But the clickers are motherfuckers. 
They're hard to kill unless you sneak up on them. You can use this, uh, it's called a shiv. It's like a, like a prison knife, basically. If you sneak up on them, you can uh, shiv them in the neck and they'll die. Uh, but the bad thing is that when the clickers get you, all they have to do is get a hand on you, but they'll kill you instantly. So that's where I'm at in the game. I'm still uh, navigating through a bunch of clickers and runners to get to this rendezvous point with this rebel group uh, that's trying to find a cure for the uh, the, the infected. And uh, they seem to be a rebel group because the, the fascist government isn't really interested in finding a cure. They're just interested in getting rid of all the... Uh, the infected zombies so that's where i'm at right now i don't want to spoil too much so I'm, I'm, that's pretty much all i'm going to say about that but it's a pretty fun game I, it, it took me a while to get into it but now that i'm actually running into zombies and not military like live people like brandon always says that in those first person shooter type games when you're like going up against humans it's not really that much fun but when you're going up against aliens or undead it's a lot more fun yeah so that's kind of where I'm at in this game. It's, it's it's becoming a lot more fun for me. That's cool how they have different types, like clickers and runners. That's pretty cool. The, those are the only two that I've run into so far. I imagine that once I get further into the game, there's going to be even more uh, varieties of uh, zombies or infected, as mm. they call them. That's cool. Yeah. And now how about a jerk of the week? Either of you have a jerk of the week? My jerk of the week is simple. Tyson Kidd. Yes, he is. The fucker cost Tyler Breeze a legitimate shot at taking Adrian Neville's NXT title. Fuck that guy. All he is is Natty's husband. <laughs> I think I texted Nick and I said, yeah, I don't like Jim Neidhart's <laughs> daughter's husband right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't even have the respect to call him Natty's husband. Fucking Tyler Breeze is so tight. He's... He, he's built to be a heel, but it seems like everyone likes him. Uh, so he's kind of, I, I kind of feel like Stone Cold Steve Austin was probably built to be a heel at first, but he got cool and everyone liked him. That That's kind of where Tyler Breeze is at right now. He's this freaking guy who's, it, it seems to be like obsessed with himself. And all he does is take selfies all day. <laughs> and he's, he's supposed to be like this male model. He has this number one music video single called what's it called mm, gorgeous or something like that <laughs> it's fucking awesome and it, it's he's supposed to be a heel but he turned into a baby face because he's just so fucking funny and he had a shot to take uh the nxt title from this guy named andrean neville who's actually a really good wrestler he's, he's undersized for wwe standards Kind of like a Rey Mysterio type, but he's a really good wrestler. He's very athletic. Uh, doesn't really have much of a personality, so who knows what's going to happen with him. But Tyler Breeze has a great personality and a great gimmick. And I think that eventually he will do very well in the WWE. But uh, for right now, he's trying to get the NXT title. And fucking Tyson Kidd, Natty's husband, had to steal that opportunity from him. So fuck him. He's my jerk of the week. That's right. <laughs> that's all i have to say about that so uh go ahead and go back and listen to go to youtube subscribe to us go ahead and look at episode 23 comic relief 24 is the man with the plan al van <laughs> and 25 is the game show hosted by nick called laden thinks has a pretty vicious punishment uh, <laughs> after you listen to it Go check out uh, Nick's page to uh, see the video of the punishment. It's pretty hilarious. I need to uh, connect with the Treasure Hunting or Nostalgia YouTube page and get those linked up so we don't have to put them in several places. That's cool. I'm sure that's a possibility. Just take some time. Done. So that'll do it for episode... <laughs> Speak up, you asshole. Dude, I'm feeling so sick. <laughs> that'll do it for episode 61 of Cherry Rounding in front of us all. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy hunting. <laughs> Holy shit, I feel like I'm going to puke. Serious? Yeah. I'm not feeling good. Leave that on the pod. <laughs>